Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, this is E and I'm making this recording of my lecture so it's easier to share for those who missed it the first time and might not be able to catch it live. Along with this video is an accompanying playlist that compares songs and videos, so please give it a listen when you have the time. Um, that way you can catch the rest of the references made in the slideshow that aren't just, you know, pictures. Not everything in this presentation is 100% metal. There's a ton of post-punk, but I think the genres give and take with each other and Temin embodies both, so here we go. I'm going to start with Peter Murphy, um, who is from the goth and post-punk band Bauhaus. So much of Temin reminds me of Peter Murphy. They both have really intense, you know, makeup and outfits and play with gender expression while they're on stage or in videos. Um, both started in groups and then went solo. Obviously, Timon is still in two groups as well. Um, they both had a Catholic upbringing and were hella introverted when they were younger. Um, despite their age difference and cultural differences, they almost speak the same visual language when it comes to performance and the stage. They're both androgynous and kind of have that vampire, uh, dangerous aesthetic going on sometimes. In the playlist that I made to accompany this, I have two Bauhaus songs to compare. Um, I apologize for doubling up, but Peter Murphy is my post-punk bias and my goth dad, so I have to have two Bauhaus songs. Um, Bauhaus and Murphy are known for intensely dark and powerful music, and Murphy in particular for his really amazing stage presence. The kind of thing where watching him perform is almost scary and terrifying. Sometimes I get that vibe from darker Timon tracks like Advice, Danger, Black Rose, um, that one entire section of the Never Gonna Dance Again Beyond Live is so Bauhausy, I my jaw hit the floor when I was watching it live. I think that the the Bauhaus goth aesthetic really fits well with Timon, and I think that it's something that he has done in the past and could also pull off more explicitly in the future. Next comparison is to Death. Um, I'm comparing the two songs Empty Words and Advice. These two songs have similar vibes to me. Um, I think a lot about if the beginning piano section of Advice was done with like buzzy electric guitar instead of the piano, like how much that would change sort of the tone of it and make it very, very metallic in a way. Um, I think honestly just mashing up these two songs would be really interesting. Um, adding blast beats to Advice for one is like a dream come true. Um, maybe someday in the future if I figure out how to make mashups I can make that happen. Um, Chuck Schuldner is the singer for Death. Um, he and Taman have a lot of similarities in my opinion. Both are constantly praised for their impact but still really humble and always striving to do more and to improve and to you know break boundaries and things like that. To quote from Wikipedia, uh, Schuldner is often referred to as the godfather of death metal. His band was called Death, and therefore the genre that was created was called death metal. Um, although he was uncomfortable with the nickname godfather of death metal, he remarked, I don't think I should take the credit for this death metal stuff. I'm just a guy from a band, and I think death is a metal band. So he was uncomfortable with his band being labeled death metal since he wanted to keep progressing past that, his own genre that he made, and keep experimenting. And he wasn't satisfied with just staying in one lane. And, you know, Chuck is a total powerhouse vocalist and songwriter and just like such a treasure for, in metal in general. And I think to me, Temin is constantly uncomfortable with being pigeonholed into just K-pop because K-pop isn't just a genre of music. It's a whole, you know, 
plethora of genres that are just given that label. And he doesn't want to be tied to that, but instead have the music be attached to who he is as a performer. So he sort of stands in front of the music and the music is just Timon. Some visual language familiar to metal acts. Specific to advice, his heavy smudged face and body makeup could be a reference to corpse paint, which is used all the time in black metal. I like to think it is, but just on a subtle scale. Um, his choice to add a mask is also really interesting to me, especially since in a lot of his choreography, he covers his face with his hands and his arms, you know, to kind of mask his expression and create like mystery within the performance. So he mentioned for advice, he wanted to bring attention to his eyes in the music video. So hiding the rest of his expression with a mask is one visually interesting and also an effective way to emphasize his gaze. It brings to mind other bands that mask up for their performances and they do it for a, a lot of different reasons. So, you know, there's Slipknot and The Locust and Insane Clown Posse who are all, you know, they hide their identity on stage in, in a way and it also is a way to further their artistic expression. Um, and it's also interesting how they can use it to separate their stage persona from their actual self. One quote that I found interesting was from Abaf from Immortal. Um, he said that his stage persona is a personification of inner conflict, and he is quoted to say, be on top of your inner demon and ride it. And I think that that is 100% in line with advice. Um, Timon sort of went off with advice and just definitely rode his inner demon for it. That topic of identity um, and stage persona versus the self, that's something that Timon frequently discusses in his music and in his interviews. Like who he is as a performer versus Lee Timon the person and where do they differ and the struggle between authenticity artistic expression and protecting yourself and privacy. So I think that that's something that definitely aligns with um, advice especially, but also just his career in general. And then to talk more specifically about just his overview of his career, um, I'm going to compare to Merciful Fate and the singer of Merciful Fate, King Diamond. Performing, they have very specific costumes and props and, you know, kind of like Kiss. They have like trademarked that face paint in a specific pattern and, you know, really merchandised it. But um, with this, it's sort of tying um, visuals to who they are as performers so that you know exactly what to anticipate when you go see King Diamond live. You know what you're going to see, there's going to be specific makeups, specific props. And with Temin, he's tied costuming to certain stages to elevate the performance. If you see him come out on stage wearing just a single glove or a shirt with only one sleeve, you're, you know you're going to hear want. If you see him come out with an eye patch, you're going to anticipate hearing criminal. Costuming is a whole other form of communication and art and a visual language of itself and Timon and his team are like super masterful at it. Another good example is bands like Guar. They have created a Guar universe where their personas are characters that have actual lives and stories and a whole narrative together and that's wholly separate from who they are under the costume. Timon frequently lives in the meta of his career and makes references to his past works in his current work, much like its own cinematic universe and with new characters for each era. He specifically talks about how he differs from each of these personas in his V-Live protagonist, which is so wonderful and also accidentally very funny. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. One thing that's super interesting to me is each era 
or like person for the title track and each persona gets assigned an MBTI and all of them are extroverted whereas Taemin himself is introverted so even just that just tells you that in order to get on stage and perform he has to change his MBTI type which is kind of funny. Next is Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats who are a rock band with metallic and psychedelic influences. A lot of their songs deal with the supernatural, cults, and serial killers, and each album has a different overall concept where their songs fit. This fits perfectly with Taemin's Never Gonna Dance Again narrative, and particularly with part one, um, with the title track of Criminal. I find Taemin's use of Stockholm Syndrome as a metaphor uh, for Criminal really interesting and I love how literally he took it in the music video and in the lyrics. He actually gave direction to the lyric writing team to change the whole vibe of the song to be more explicitly about Stockholm Syndrome and he really, he had tremendous control over the concept and imagery for this music video and it's, it's really his baby and I can see the parallels to the psychedelic horror-like references that bands like Uncle Acid make. Another interesting part is sampling. Uncle Acid and countless other bands uh, use samples from movies and TV shows or even speeches to elevate their music, and Timmin did the same in Criminal by having his staff write and record fake newsreels to play in the background. If I remember correctly, the newsreels are in both English and Korean, and they sort of overlap, and it's hard to hear exactly what's being said, but I'm pretty sure what it amounts to is that the victim of the crime and the criminal were actually cooperating with each other, um, so that brings back the Stockholm Syndrome cinematic element to it. Religious imagery, specifically Catholic imagery, is really common in metal. In a lot of metal acts, it's used subversively or mockingly. Bands like Ghost sort of take it very literally and dress as the Pope and have very literal stage and set design and costuming for it. Bands like Black Sabbath also use Catholicism in lyrics and performance. What's interesting is that, like Black Sabbath, Temin is, is actually Catholic, has mentioned it several times that he's a practicing Catholic and seems to bring the visuals into his work in a reverent way, but also in um, the same sort of conflicting way when he works with his identity. We don't know what his relationship with religion is since it's a personal thing, but it seems to play a heavy role in his work in the same way as it does with his struggle with identity. When you grow up with religion, the symbols are really embedded in your mind and have so much meaning and connotation. So I can really relate to and understand why Catholic stuff is used so often. Yeah, I don't really know what message he's trying to send with it, but whatever it is, I am here for it and I love it. In the Want music video, he is literally the Virgin Mary and the devil as two different characters, um, the serpent and Adam and Eve toying with seduction and innocence. Um, he said before it references the Old Testament literally, uh, tempting Adam to bite the forbidden fruit. I won't go too deeply into it because I could go on for days, uh, but he dances at the gates of hell literally and then three seconds later is being baptized in a shower. So it's so good and so packed to the gills with symbolism and I will never get over it. Also, you know, being controversial or subversive and stirring people up is metal in and of itself. So he's doing it right. It's very punk and metal of him to basically be the devil. Brian Ferry and Roxy Music are not metal. However, 
Brian Ferry is goth as hell, and he pioneered glam rock and influenced so many bands that are my favorite and also in this slideshow. I feel like Timmins music bears a lot of qualities similar to Brian Ferry's. It's glamorous, it's dark, it's brooding, and even the way that they kind of have a, a tense softness in their voices is similar to me. In this comparison, Want by Temin and Seven Deadly Sins by Brian Ferry, I want to compare those two because they have so much lyrical symmetry. So dealing with sins, temptation, longing, seduction, and all with religious subtext. Truly, these two songs are a feast for me, and I feel like it's a good bridge, you know, between K-pop and goth which would be kind of the first step in Taemin and metal. So it's kind of like that goth and glam rock influenced a lot of metal bands and post-punk bands, and therefore I think it's just the, the natural progression of Taemin's music and comparing. So I want to discuss the variety of both metal and K-pop. A lot of folks that are unfamiliar with metal might think all music in the metal neighborhood is about the same stuff and that it's all, you know, violent and aggressive, but there's a lot of variety and artistic expression in it. And there's also so many subgenres of metal that tend to deal with certain topics more often than others. In this comparison, I want to talk about Windhand, who is a woman-fronted doom metal band and their song Woodbine is pretty sexy while also being really heavy and it's a really wonderful song but I didn't realize how much the lyrics reminded me of Timmin's artistic groove. Uh, both songs are basically love songs us using ocean waves as a metaphor for intimacy and love and it's just like pretty amazing how two songs that sound nothing the same are basically about the same thing um, and that just goes to show that you know if you're open-minded about music a lot of it has a lot of similar threads and there's something for everybody in a way the next comparison i want to make is to the epic doom band candlemas and their song bewitched with Taman's move i added this as a joke but honestly, I think like it's worth it to watch. Um, it's kind of a hilarious video, and it's also a really good song. Um, it's really dorky as well, but like it's just a lot of fun, and it's basically about putting someone under a spell with your music, and that's something that I think bears a lot of similarity to Timmin's move. Um, so, you know, elegant dance moves and atmosphere and music and putting someone under a spell with it is just a concept that transcends genre. You'll find lyrics just like this in like R&B and classic rock and in like classic poetry. It's just, it's really like a very unifying concept and I think that watching these two videos back to back is probably going to be hilarious so i hope you guys enjoy watching the playlist afterwards next is susie and the banshees and this one is definitely reaching um but in my brain these two videos are really similar when i first saw the just me and you vcr during the beyond live it was another like arresting moment for me where i know that referentially it's probably black swan make makeup but i can't help but see susie makeup in this the content of the lyrics of these two songs aren't very similar at all but the imagery of the videos is really interesting to me and i think that despite having different meanings in the songs there's almost a similar quality to their singing um, I look forward to you guys watching these videos and hearing your thoughts if you have any about it. Next is Judas Priest. 
with Rob Halford, who is basically the king of metal. Um, he has a profound influence, not only on musicality in metal and singing, but in styling the whole of metal. He was the first metal person to don leather and studs and all that motorcycle gang costuming on stage. And pretty much everyone followed him in this. And unbeknownst to everyone else, Halford is gay and was not out at the time. And this styling came from gay subculture. So something that belonged to such a small group gradually took over metal and then also gradually became mainstream. It's so funny to me that this became so popular without people fully understanding its origins and Rob Halford is a legend for it. To relate this to Taman, he frequently uses the same aesthetics as well as using harnesses and restraints and bondage in his performances. It's subversive and wonderful. It's totally possible because of Halford and those influenced by him and kind of that domino effect that it has to today where things that wouldn't have been mainstream now are, and I think that Timon is still pushing the envelope on that. I'm comparing Breaking the Law and Famous. Um, for the most part, just to add um, a Judas Priest song to the playlist, but I think the lyrics actually do have a little bit of a relation. Halford wrote the lyrics to Breaking the Law while closeted and not telling his bandmates about his sexuality for fear of repercussion. There's anger in my heart. You don't know what it's like. You don't have a clue. And then in Famous, Timon is talking about his struggle with identity in the spotlight and the stress of fame. Who am I? I still don't know. I'm starting to get a headache. It's a little bit of a reach, but I just think it's interesting, um, both visually and lyrically, how these two worlds sort of fit together. Next, I want to talk about uh, performance and live music. So performance is everything for Timon, and watching his concerts really takes your breath away. Um, I haven't been to one in person, but I've been to a ton of shows to see bands in my day, and not every band has presence or is even good live. Um, some bands literally play their instruments with their backs to you and don't even interact with an audience. So one band that I would really like to highlight is Fugazi. They are absolutely explosive live. The scene that they played in was a really tight-knit community with a lot of solidarity. The performance I shared is of Burning, which starts out quiet and churning and plucking, but then gradually gets more tense and loud, and then the singer eventually explodes with energy. And I think that that coiled tight like a spring tenseness to then explode is exactly how I feel watching Temin perform. The song that I included of Temin's is Crazy For You, and it's a fan cam from Off Sick. It's not the best. Uh, please, if you can, just watch the actual Off Sick DVD someday to get the full experience, the whole thing. Please, it's my favorite. Um, but Crazy For You starts slow and then has a drastic change and explosive parts. And I feel like he is one hell of a performer and non-K-pop people who enjoy entertaining live music would totally get into it seeing him live. Off Sick is also a great concert to watch to get an idea of what a more rock-based approach to Timmons music would sound like. Um, for a lot of the songs, there's actually a live band, uh, and it's awesome. The different arrangement is really interesting and really fun, and I think Tiger and Ace are two songs that, along with Crazy For You, are just so, so good at Off Sick, and I would just really like to almost have a whole album of just the live versions of that. And I'd like to manifest Timmin working with live bands more in 2022. Another important similarity I find between metal and K-pop is crowd participation. In K-pop, 
Obviously, there are fan chants and light sticks that synchronize with the entire audience, and you know, you sort of participate together in the call and response with your favorite artist. It's so powerful and fun and really easy to see how you could get swept up in the energy. In metal, of course, there are circle pits um, and you know, jumping off the stage, stage diving and stuff. Um, but then there's also call and response all the time with really popular songs where everyone knows the lyrics. And so there's that same sense of unity of shouting together and it's so awesome. Uh, I wanna highlight municipal waste because their audience participation is top notch. Uh, people bring like big inflatable toys and like pool floaties and boogie boards and just go absolutely ham crowd surfing and doing the call and response. Um, the video that I added for Municipal Waste is actually a recording like from the Circle Pit, so you can see the band play and then see what the audience is doing in response, and it's so fun. Next is My Chemical Romance, who is also not a metal band. However, before dropping advice, um, Timin said that he was going to be angsty and a little emo, and boy, did he deliver. Sad Kids is just an emo song. And in a lot of the like looks for this era, um, between the jacket for advice and like the GQ photo shoot that I have a photo from here, he's serving I'm not okay realness and I will never get over it. Um, it's a little bit of a reach, but I don't care. And it just makes 12 year old me massively happy to see the correlation here. I don't really have commentary for this. Please watch Timin covering Corn. It's my favorite thing, and it's basically what solidified him as my favorite person in K-pop. So some ending thoughts are, Timin has a very rich visual and musical library from his upbringing and from years in the industry, and he also has a master's degree in film, so like, I think he just speaks and learns visually very well. Um, it makes his brain really big and smart and makes his work so interesting to dissect. He constantly goes against the norms of what is popular and that's probably in part thanks to, you know, debuting in Shiny and for being that experimental group. Um, metal and punk have always had that same attitude of just, you know, breaking down norms and doing things that are controversial. And on top of it, Timmins all tattooed up and gets piercings to relieve stress, so I think it's pretty likely that he's a metalhead. And I could be 100% wrong about all of this, but I really love drawing these comparisons, and I think it's fun and interesting to dissect his work. Metal folks that are unfamiliar with K-pop might only imagine songs with saccharine and catchy melodies like G by Girls' Generation which is an awesome song, don't get me wrong, but like that's probably the impression that a lot of people unfamiliar with K-pop have. And K-pop people might think metal is just noise and violent, but I assure you there are melodic and pretty metal songs and there are also harsh, noisy K-pop songs. I find myself super inspired by our discussions on the Discord over the last week to keep my ears open for more similarities and I feel like doing this project sort of just really made me appreciate all the music that I like that much more. In conclusion, there's something out there for everyone. K-pop and metal ain't that different. Taemin is king. Thank you everyone for listening. I appreciate you guys taking time out of your lives to hear my hot takes, and I hope it was enjoyable. Let me know if you have any questions on Discord. Um, and. I hope you guys enjoy the accompanying playlist. It also has some bonus songs not mentioned in the slideshow. So um, I really hope you guys enjoy and take care.